Hello, innovators. I'm Todd Wyant, and welcome to the Bridging the Gap podcast presented by Applied Software. You're invited to join our MEP and construction innovation adventure with a mission to propel this great industry forward. My guest today is Dr. Charles Red Jr. He is a nationally recognized Fortune 500 business leader with a profound approach to developing successful leadership. His track record of transforming underperforming sales teams at the Hershey Company, Pepsi Cola, Frito Lay, and Coca Cola Enterprise has made him a national leader in operations, sales, and leadership teams, which have resulted in record-breaking sales. Welcome to the show, Dr. Red. Oh, it's my pleasure, Todd. It's great to be here. It's a great day just because I'm talking to you today. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I've been looking forward to this conversation since our, our introductory call a, a couple of weeks ago. So excited it's finally here. Absolutely. Uh, well, I want to start with what is good leadership look like to you? Let's define our terms here. Well, you know, leadership is all about, from my perspective, leading from the front, being that great example. I like to talk about transformational leadership, but underneath that transformational leadership is servant leadership. And that's so important today, because when you think about servant leadership, you think about serving others to achieve your goals and to uh, do it together, not by yourself. You know, I used to play a game as a kid. Uh, we called it King of the Hill. And the objective of the game was to get to the top and knock everybody else off. And once you get to the top, raise your hand in victory and beat your chest. Today yeah. in leadership, what is important today is that there is a diversity and creativity of all people bringing various support, uh, components of experiences that allows us all to learn and to grow. So the great leaders understand that, that underneath the layers of everybody, there is something within each and every one of us that contributes and that adds value. So leadership is about growing together, arriving together in a victorious way of creative minds and collective minds coming together. And you're going to go further. You're going to have that much more of an impact. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so brings up an interesting question with you pairing it with servant leadership. Uh, can you be a leader without serving? Absolutely. You can be a leader. Uh, but how far will you go with that? How far can you get? The fact is, is that you can do more in numbers. And the key to a strong leader is being able to have that eye and be able to ask the correct questions to understand what they have in others. And when you set the goal and you set the vision, you're able to start searching and asking the proper question to each individual on your team, and you will uncover their strength. And when you add up all of the strength together, you're going to be smarter, you're going to be wiser, and you're going to get more passionate input from those that follow you because they have something in, at stake that they too are going to be proud of at the end of the day. Yeah. So how does it differ then from just your, your average leadership traits? Well, when you think about, you know, you can lead people in a bad way. You can lead people in a good way. Everyone has mm -hmm. some form of leadership because leadership is some kind of persuasion. You know, in my business, we sell every day. And the question that we have to ask each and every day is why? Why do you want to do X, Y, Z that we're asking you to do? And we have to have compelling answers uh, to get people to move in that direction. We call that impact. And the fact is, is that we have to have the facts and the relationship hand in hand going together so that we can bring people along with us, which creates that impact. So you can lead folks, whether you know it or not, it's just a matter of what is the why that you want people to follow you. And when it's a compelling reason and it makes sense and people can trust you, you'll find that you can uh, accumulate followers because everybody wants to be a part of something that's going somewhere, that's going to achieve something, and it's going to be something of positive. So that's the key. We all have the ability, in my opinion, to lead. It's just a matter of how effectively are we doing it and what changes are we going to make for the betterment of everybody, not just for one person. Yeah. So what's your why then? My why is that I can bring 
Well, when I think in terms of business, from let's start right from there. We're business partners. The why is that I'm here to make you more profitable, to drive more sales, and to drive more market share. When it comes to me, when it comes to mentoring and coaching and helping developing people, the why is because there is potential in you. And that with that potential, you can dream out loud and you can achieve your goals and go after your dreams. That's why you want to live a life of significance and leave a generation uh, of a legacy that you will continue to have influence as you are gone on with the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So pretty aspirational there. How, how do people... Um, start to developing and kind of build that out if they haven't taken the time to, to sit down and, and think about that aspiration? Well, now you're coming to the discussion about passion. Passion, that word is key. And there again, as I've said, that we all have something of value, but not everybody has uncovered that. And so uh -huh. when we talk about passion and you are, this is where it is something that you enjoy that you do, that people have noticed something about you that you do well. Uh, folks have told you that this is uh, something that you do well. The fact is, is that when you uncover your passion and then you are able to articulate what it is that you are passionate about, then you have the ability to not only lead, but to bring people alongside of you to be a part of that passion and that drive in leadership. Mm -hmm. So as part of figuring out that passion, then really getting that, that 360 view uh, of what other people are speaking into and, and seeing as a, um, you know, something that you're doing really well in and kind of calling that out, or does it come really just from within of like, this is the direction that I really want to go. Both. And, and, you know, I think about when I had the opportunity to recruit college kids off of campuses at their career fair, uh, they come to our booth. Of course, we have great products. They always want to sample that. But you'd be amazed how many folks are still, tr still trying to figure it out, even though they're graduating and have a degree in hand, uh, haven't quite done that, you know. And what's amazing is that folks will come and they'll say, well, what do you have? And, uh, we, you know, when it should be about them already done their research and have their elevator speech ready to present to us so that they can get beyond the curtain into a uh, interview. But there have been times that I have stepped from around the table and I have helped students to identify where their strength may lie and what they should do in pursuing, because in that particular environment in a career fair, it's not about looking for a job. It's really about starting a career. There is a difference, the job and the career. So I asked them, I said, you know what, I'm just going to just going to ask you a simple question. And I'm gonna make it real plain because I want to help you identify where I feel would be helpful for you as you think about advancing your career. And that is if every profession Everyone, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, teacher, fireman, policeman, whatever it might be, they all pay $10 an hour, every single one of them. Which one would you choose? And they think for a second or two and they gravitate to a particular area. I said, well, there lies a clue as to where your passion is and where your heart is and you should pursue it. And so that's helped people in the sense that don't just necessarily do a good thing but strive to do the right thing that's within you and then allow that to grow in you. Because just because you finish school in four years, the learning doesn't stop, the growing doesn't stop. But what I have found, Todd, and I've looked at some of the athletes or some of the entertainers who have passionately gone after their gift or their, uh, whether they're a, a basketball player, they practice day and night, they worked out, they watched what they ate, and the scouts begin to notice them because of them being able to exhibit uh, the potential of becoming a professional. Well, we all have something, it may not be an athlete, it may not be that, but it's something that we do well, that if we gave it the attention, and if we gave it the time, it will open up the way for us to do even bigger and better things. 
And so I tell folks that when you think about leadership and you think about passion and what's in you, let's go after it. As the saying goes, let's not be a, a jack of all trades, but let's be a master of something. And then we can spread our wings as our gift and our passion has made the way and open up doors for us to do even more. Mm -hmm. So what do you think stops people then from really diving into that area and figuring it out and hitting on their passion? Yeah. You know, one of the things that I'm doing now, I'm a life coach. And what does a life coach do? A life coach helps people get unstuck. People are stuck and they don't know which way to go. And what prohibits folks is the fact of maybe fear of failing, maybe wanting to do several things, but haven't settled on one particular thing. Perhaps someone has even told them that they uh, wouldn't succeed in it. They're just too far out there and, and become real, so to speak. But I teach folks or I coach folks on dreaming out loud looking with inside themselves and seeing the potential and seeing the possibilities and making the goals tangible where they can see it physically and begin to take steps towards that way of getting there. See, if you can see it or if you can perceive it, you can certainly achieve it. But if you're just talking and, and you're just kind of wandering in your mind and you're just hoping then that's all it would be is a hope. But when you can actually get someone to actually see it and you start with small steps, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to drive from Atlanta to California in one day. It's going to take me some steps, some uh, pit stops to make, some planning to do, but my eye and my sight is on the goal of getting those 2000 miles across the country to reach my destiny. And so as a life coach, we come alongside of them and they see it and we encourage them and we uh, hold them accountable to continue that path. So it's a wonderful thing to see someone to really with, look with inside themselves and be able to dream out loud to the extent that it does become a possibility to them. And what happens is, is that you'll be amazed that like-minded people who are thinking along the lines of what your goals are will come alongside of you and will pour into your vision as well because you will have connected to people who are able to grow and help you grow. And that's so important. Yeah. So let, let's say that somebody has really thought through, they have their passion, they have their goal, they're, they're driving forward. And then, you know, something like, what happened this last year, disruption comes and kind of knocks them off. How should they handle and, and kind of embrace those times of disruption with, in regards to their purpose? That's a good thing because I think during particular times, it gives us a chance to really reflect and look within. Also, anybody that's ever done anything significant has failed. Uh, you know, I work for a company, the Hershey company, 126 years around, the founder of the company failed at least three times, but got it right. Okay. So when we fail or when something happens, it's a pause. And I like with uh, one of my mentors, uh, John Maxwell has said, he says, you know, you either, you either learn and live or you live and learn. And, you know, there's a difference there because when you learn and live, you reflect on the, fail the failure or the mistakes and you examine what you could do better and you become wiser and you ask folks who have experience, you ask them questions and you learn from them. And so that way you're able to come out of that state of failing, but failing forward and growing from the experience. On the other mm -hmm. side of that, when you're just living and learning, then it's like I'm just going along and I make a mistake here, I get a, a bump on the head here, I get a hickey here and a scratch there. And sometimes you just throw in the towel and say, that's enough, I tried it, I've wasted all of my time, I've wasted my money. But the fact is, is that the times that we have difficulties, the times that we fall down is the time to reflect and learn and live. 
And someone said it to me this way. He, they said, it, it's not the mistakes that people will, will uh, remember, but it's how we've overcome those mistakes is what mm -hmm. they will remember. And so I've learned to fail forward. I've got a lot of failing in my life and career, but I've gotten wiser, not bitter, not down, but I've gotten better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that we talk a lot about uh, on this podcast is, is kind of redefining what failure means. Cause you know, in the construction industry, uh, failure is a bad four letter word that, that nobody likes to, to say. And there's such a stigma around the word failure, but to me, failure is, is not trying it. And if you you're trying it, you're learning it, you're growing. That's not really failure. You're, you're, you've learned something and, and you're moving on and hopefully you're, you're growing from it to your point. Um, and you learn something what not to do, hopefully how to improve it. But I think we have to take some of the, the stigma out of the word failure because nobody likes to have that label kind of branded on them. Well, you know, it's a life lesson. I think of uh, the great basketball player, uh, Michael Jordan, who didn't make the high school basketball team. Uh, and look at him now, a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I think it turned out all right for him. <laughs> feeling, though we might, you know, shed a few tears and and maybe feel like giving up, but that inner determination uh, that people have, and and they say, okay, I failed. When you can look in the mirror and says, you know what, I can do better. And when you apply that, instead of placing blame or pointing a finger. Let's do a self-examination uh, of ourselves. Someone said it this way, you know, when we point that finger at something or someone, that thumb is pointing back to us. And so mm. we can learn from these situations. We learn from our own mistakes and we learn from mistakes that others commit. But I'm amazed at how people that have been successful, they'll talk about what behind the uh, success. And, you know, everyone sometimes wants to be like somebody or wear their jersey and put their name on the back of their uh, the jersey and, and uh, admire someone. But really, if you get behind the music or behind the uh, the all of the trials and the tribulation that person went through, you'll understand how that person is successful. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just a wonderful thing to see someone recognize that I can do better and own it and then do better. Yeah. So how would you encourage somebody to kind of rebrand what failure is into this context? I would encourage someone to say, you know, I, I was down, but I'm not out. And I shall continue to grow and learn and live. That's what I would say. Because I've admitted I was down, but I'm not out. But I continue to learn and grow. And so I'll grow on. Right. But it takes that humility at the, the forefront there to say that you're even down. Uh, I think all too often people don't even want to acknowledge that they were down. You know, they, they gloss over it or they, they come up with an excuse or justification for it. And it can sound really good in your head. But I think being able to have that humility and say, yeah, that knocked me down. That was, that was stupid. Or <laughs> yeah. I'm reminded of um, uh, my daughter was into track and um, she was in a relay. And uh, when the baton was handed to her, she slipped and fell. Now she could have stayed there and nursed her knee that she scraped. She pops up and she turns on the speed and, and went as fast as she could go. Now they didn't yeah. win, but she didn't give up. And that's the key in life. You may fall, you may have a bruise, but you get up and you keep going. And uh, that's the part that I, I'd love to see. And then in that same kind of analogy, we talk about track, you know, the, the marathon, not the marathons, but the people who are running like the four miles, what have you. And it's always somebody going to come and last, right? And, and what's amazing, the, the gallery of the fans, uh, the last person who's struggling to get to the finish line and what are they doing? They're applauding all the way along that last hundred yards and they crossed that yard, the uh, ribbon there. The fact is they didn't come in first, but they didn't stop. And you'll be amazed. People like to see folks who keep trying 
and then they jump in and support. And that's a good thing. We all need that kind of support. Yeah, absolutely. So what about the, the people that may not really struggle with the, the failure aspect of it, but you know, things are, are changing. How do they stay relevant even with their, they, they may have a, a clear purpose, but you know, how do you, how do you keep that relevancy and any tips to kind of change in your mindset along the way as things change? Well, certainly keeping the, uh, being relevant and keeping that is about continuous learning, continuous growing. Uh, the, in my business, I like to say that, you know, there should always be someone who's smarter than you that you can always go to. And there should be someone who is along the journey with you sort of horizontally. And there should be someone who is coming up, uh, trying to grow up and trying to learn up or whatever that may be. The fact is, is that these three components here keep you relevant. When I work with my team, uh, I bring some of the uh, old school and I learn some of the new school and I blend them together, which keeps me relevant and keeps me able to uh, make a difference, whether I'm talking to someone uh, older or younger or, or whatever it might be. So the key to all of this is to be a continuous learner and grower and to challenge yourself by getting with the folks that will teach you something. And uh, that's why how we met. We taught each other something. We shared something. And there is something that you have that I need. And there's something I have that you need. And when you put it all together, it makes us that much more effective and that much more impactful and that much more far reaching. Yeah, I, I more than uh, agree with that. I, I think it goes back to the humility aspect of it, though, too, to, to admit, hey, I, I don't have it all. I, I need something. And to ask for help, that's that's such a hard step for, for so many. And it takes a lot of uh, courage, quite frankly, to, to, to admit that you need some help. You have, you have a need. Well, you think about it. We started off talking about servant leadership. Well, the fact is, here's the difference. Servant leadership is how may I help you versus you, what can I get out of for me? I'm willing to give you something. And in me giving you something, uh, what happens in that scenario is that um, I kind of equate it to uh, going to your favorite restaurant and, and, and you go there, why? Because uh, you get great service, you get great food, and uh, you, you go and tell your family and friends, hey, you got to check out this restaurant. Well, as a servant leader, as I serve you, you're going to say, just like that restaurant experience, Dr. Charles added value. Dr. Charles, he, he made me better. And what happens is the reputation of that service goes forward. And in going forward, everyone is benefited in a positive way. So it all started about not what's in it for me, but what is it that I can help you with? It's a wonderful thing. Someone said it this way, you know, if you have a bad experience on the other side, you go to a restaurant, the service is bad, the food is terrible. That one person tells at least 10 other folks, man, don't go there. You don't want to go there. It's terrible service. And so it spreads. But in servant leadership and recognizing what you can do and what others can do and working together, everyone benefits from it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I always think of... Uh... Chick-fil-A, you know, I'm, I'm a good Atlanta boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Chick-fil-A, you know, they obviously have, that's their whole brand is, is mm -hmm. around servant. Uh, and, and so people are willing to wait in those crazy mm -hmm. lines wrapped around the building twice and three times even where they would never do that at a McDonald's or Burger King, you know, because, but Chick-fil-A, they, they know they're going to get good service. They're going to have a really pleasant, happy experience. And Huh, you know, have so much benefit just from the experience of it. Not the food's amazing. Uh -huh. I love Chick Fil A, but uh, it is not just about the chicken sandwich there. Yeah, I mean, you you bring an excellent example. Uh, I I had a chance to uh, meet uh, the Cathy's uh, at one time and went to the headquarters there. My daughter did some work for them. Uh, I just had lunch at Chick Fil A, and you know what they say all the time: "My pleasure." That is the key. I'll go to a Burger King or someplace and they'll say, well, your order is X amount of dollars 
and I'll say, thank you. You don't hear anything back and you just go back and you pay them. But they've got it down to a T. And one thing about it, they work only six days a week and they had a profit every year. Yep. That's amazing. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> well, kind of circling back on the, the leadership aspect of it, how should a, a good leader tap into and then leverage the diversity of experience that their team really brings to push that team forward even more? Here again, it's identifying the talent. I look at it like a baseball scout. You know, they're going out looking for baseball players that can run, that can hit, that can catch, that can throw, uh, what position they, they can play. And so as leaders, it's the same thing. On a baseball field, there's nine positions and you've got to identify infielders, outfielders, catchers, pitchers. And so as a leader, they, you're building a team and you want to have it all fit together so that everything flows in a way that is cohesive, that is, a, that is, that is team work coming together. And someone said it this way, that, that players win games, but team wins championships. And this is the key in leadership and understanding that if you want to be successful, you will understand you may have some MVPs on your team, but it takes a team to win championships. Anybody that's ever won anything realizes that everybody has a position and a place and they work with inside their lane and they work all together so that all can arrive in holding up the championship trophy. And I look at some of the teams that have been successful year after year after year because they get it. It's all about teamwork and it's all about the leader identifying the strength of each individual player, pulling it all in together and building that team to last, not to have a success one year and then unsuccessful the next, but for the long term. Yeah, well, and I think the, the leader needs that foresight on, on seeing into their people of this might not be a skill that they're doing now, but it's a skill that they could really grow into and, and be really successful at. And then it takes back to humility again. It, it takes humility on everybody's part of there's going to be times where you're going to have to do something that you don't really like to do, but it's for the betterment of the, the team and where the team needs you. And you got to kind of have to suck it up in that moment and, and do it for the, the sake of the team. Absolutely. You know, I think about baseball, you've got the starting pitcher. Nowadays, we just want you to go six innings. And then we've got a seventh inning guy, we've got an eighth inning guy, and we've got the ninth inning closer. Well, they have identified the plan as to how and what it is that they're going to do. So the yep. players, they know that it's the seventh inning. That person, hey, I better start mentally getting prepared. I've got to start getting ready to warm up. All right, the eighth inning person, they start the ninth. And at the end of the game, everyone has made a contribution to the game in itself. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say to the, the devil's advocate out there who, who may push back saying, you know, they don't really have time to, to slow down or, or think through this, or it really just doesn't have any relevancy to accomplishing the to-dos of their job? Well, you can try to do it all by yourself. There's only so many hours in a day, so many hours in a week. You'll burn up and you'll burn out. When you come to understand that in of yourself and, and if you just, if nothing changes, nothing change. And that's where you have to come to that realization is that if nothing changes, nothing change. And so it begins with just a small step in the direction to begin moving and coming out of that place. Because um, when you talk about it and you talk to the people who have done that, been there, uh, they've made it to the mountaintop and they're on their way back and you're passing them by. You take that time and you share with them uh, and you talk to them. Um, someone said it this way, you know, every time you have an interaction with people and uh, you're interested in growing yourself, then have a list of questions that you've already prepared and ask those questions so that you can learn and be that much more effective. I think those that are stuck, those that don't wanna go anywhere, they're not asking the questions. They're not getting that feeling that they can do it. 
because perhaps mm -hmm. maybe somebody told them they couldn't do it. But the fact is, is that if you start talking to people that are doing what it is that you aspire to do and asking the questions, you'll start gaining a little bit more confidence within yourself. You'll start gaining the energy and the passion to go and research and to look and find and be able to start to implement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that answer of, of looking for somebody who you're really aspiring to be and then try to learn from them. Because, uh, you know, it's it's easy to, to look at that person and, and say, oh, well, maybe they were an overnight success or, you know, they, they have they made this huge jump up. But back to what you were saying earlier, you're not really seeing all those tiny little, you know, 1% improvements over a very long period that made that big jump possible because it the reality is it's not a big jump. It was, it was these little improvements over time. It takes, a, it takes a lot, but as the saying goes, you know, you, you, you take a licking, but you keep on ticking. That's the key. Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, over the, the last year, uh, what's something that you've gotten better at, at saying no to? That's a good question. Because, well, one thing I tell you what, what, what has helped me is that when you have identified the things that are important to you, uh, Lou Holtz, former coach said, what is winning about? And he takes the word win, W-I-N, and, and it means what's important now. When you identify what is important now, then you put boundaries around that. Because if you don't, you'll get distracted and you'll run off the road and you'll look back and wonder where the time went and you didn't get around to doing what you set, you set out to do. So I've learned over the year is that I've identified the things that are what are important now and I'm determined to get them finished and I put boundaries around it so that I would not get distracted or delayed or discouraged or defeated but rather I would stay focused. And I have a saying for my team, when we focus, we win. When you mm -hmm. focus, you win. But when we all focus, we all win. So it's a matter of what's important now and guarding those things that are important and working your way through them all the way to the end. And then of course, celebrate along different milestones until you get to the completion, then you start the process over again. That's been the key for me over the last year. I've been able to do a lot of things, but they have been the right things. And sometimes people are doing good things, but not necessarily the right things. Working mm -hmm. hard, but not necessarily working smart. And so we wanna have something that we can look back on, that we've accomplished, something that we set out to do, and we walked it through all the way to the end versus still being on the things to do list. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious, uh, do you write down what's important or like, do you have a, a list of stuff that you can look back on or is it, you just kind of keep a running list in your head? Uh, well, it's two things. One, the big picture, what do I want to accomplish in the year? Then the second layer is what are the milestones each quarter? Uh -huh. And then doing the quarter each day is a checkbox, a box next to the task. And it has to have a check in it when it's done. And yeah. something about seeing it and seeing boxes unchecked is a motivation to continue to work yourself down that list. It's just something about that. When you set your mind up to doing something, if you've got it on paper or, or in your phone or whatever it might be, but you're not going to move on to the next phase until every box has been checked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I not surprised that it's in, in writing. I find that, uh, you know, if, if it's not written down, it's, you don't really have it as a priority or something that you're, you're actively trying to do. I, I have, sticky notes that I, I write down. There's something really satisfying and ripping that sticky note at, <laughs> once the, the task is complete. It's one of my big, my big driver, just get to the, <laughs> finish that thing so I can rip that sticky note. Um, I have, you know, a journal too, of keeping priorities and stuff. And um, 
I just think that's that's super helpful. If I don't write it down, it's might be a, have been a good thought. Might have been something that I need to focus on, but it's it's going to be out of my head. And yeah, no I'll tell you something else, Todd. You know, when I when you think about the big picture, the big dream, everyone has dreams, but when you think about it, if you can put it in a tangible way, uh, let's say you're going to open up a school. Well, let's let's take a picture of a of a school. And let's keep that picture before you on the refrigerator, in the car, in your pocket, uh, in your wallet. And you look at it from time to time and it serves as something that you're moving towards yep. that you're going to achieve someday. But when you can see it, like I said, you can see it and you can realize it that, you know, this is something that I dream, but I am going to start making steps towards it. And if it's just one step a day, keep moving and you're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big believer in, in visualizing what the, the big win is, mm -hmm. because if you don't, how do you know you ever got it? That's right. That's you don't right. know you reached that, that destination. But uh, anyway, what are some kind of essential routines for success for you? Focus, focus, focus. That's a key. When you, when you focus, you win. That's the key, staying focused. Being true to yourself of what you know and what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And what you don't know, get with folks that do know and learn from them. That is key. That would be the uh, first couple of things. And then I would say that when you feel like you have arrived, give back. Give back. Don't forget where you came from. Go mm -hmm. back and bring others up to the mountaintop with you. That would be yeah. the three things I would say. Nice. Uh, well, what kind of gut check can people use to determine what kind of leader that they actually are? Well, when you feel, you know, if you're a leader that want to have people surrounded, surrounding you and just do what you ask them to do and they become yes people. Uh, they're afraid to talk to you. Those are the wrong, that's the wrong crowd. You need folks that are going to get in the huddle with you, going to help everyone in the huddle and to dialogue and to talk about things and to um, share their experiences and then make a decision as a result of that. That's going to make us all better. You know, I tell my team, you know, we can disagree uh, but here's the thing. If we disagree on something, then give me at least one solution. And so then your solution very well may be uh, the answer to what we're doing. But just mm -hmm. to drop off the, the, uh, the complaint or to drop off the uh, whatever it is that you want to say without having anything to go with it, we've got to be able to work together and be able to think together. And so that when we come out of this meeting, we are all one. And in the oneness of it, we all have a part in it. So I think that is so key that those discussions that you have with your teams is that they're transparent, that they're, uh, you know, you're not just looking for what you want to hear. You want to be challenged, but then you want to have some solutions and then make the best decision and follow the course. It works. People will go through walls for you when they feel that they have some ownership, they have some buy-in uh, in it. Uh, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More than uh, agree with everything on, on that point for sure. Um, well, how do people get a hold of you and, and find out more information? Well, you know, I'm out there, drcharlesred.com website, Dr. Charles Red for the LinkedIn. Uh, I wrote a book last year uh, called Don't Stop Now. Uh, it's really about a book about my personal journey, uh, as well as some leadership tips, and what have you. Uh, you can find that on Barnes and Nobles, Amazon. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting a hold of me and how can I help you? This is what I've been doing over the last year, Todd. I've been reaching out to like-minded folks. They are some amazing people doing some amazing things, such as yourself and others. And I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm adding value, at least I hope so, when I have these types of encounters. And um, it's a wonderful thing to give. 
And you know, someone said, you know, you might plant a few seeds, but but the harvest is greater than the seeds that you planted. And so I'm reaping a harvest by meeting great people and being a part of something special. So I'm all about trying to serve and to help. And where I can, I will. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, last question for you. What does innovation mean to you? Innovation means to me is being receptive to think outside of the box, being open to possibilities, dreaming out loud, understanding that we can do all things if we only come together and put these minds together and experiences together and we can accomplish so much more. But just in of ourselves, we're limiting ourselves. But when we are inclusive of all diversities of experiences and people, we can do so much more. Someone said, if one match can start a forest fire, just imagine all the great minds and people coming together for a good cause to make a difference. Awesome. That's a great way to end it. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Dr. Red. Really appreciate you, all your insights. So like I've always said to everyone that I've talked to, we're not going to say goodbye. We're simply going to say, see you later, because there'll be an aha moment that we can help each other. We can have conversation. We can dream out loud together. We can talk about uh, what ifs, how we can. Those things are going to keep us connected and it's going to also make a difference in what we're doing in our communities.